107.5 WBLS, your number one source for R&B. It's 107.5 WBLS. Every now and again, I get the honor and the pleasure of oh speaking boy. to the Reverend oh Jesse Jackson in the building, everybody. <laughs> And you know what? It was. Start none, won't be none. Uh oh, don't start none. <laughs> won't be none. Listen, you know, just a couple of days ago, I was on the air talking with my daughter, and we were talking about the very first time we ever voted. And I brought your name up because the first time I was old enough to vote, I voted for you for president. And I remember, you know, we were talking about the same kind of experience she had in going with all her friends from college to the polling places and, and I we did and, the and same the thing news, for you, you. You were just eight, which just ex- makes it even <laughs> 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 But you know what what ignited that memory was when I saw what happened at the women's march and how important that was for her, how you important the it power was. Of hope, you know. Yes. People who were who had lost were looking like winners. Mm. Those who were down felt their on the way up and those right. who were up on a Friday felt down. Yeah. They know they're stolen something very valuable. Yes. People's right to vote. So and, well, and the, one, the one person won vote democracy, that's enough to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Electoral College is based upon uh, the southern states counting us in slavery as a part of their right to for, for parity. For parity. And so Hillary won the campaign. And while Trump has is the captain of the ship, Right. The wind will determine where it goes. We are the wind of hope. Right. We're the wind of change. So we're not blowing backwards. You being there that day, what was going through your mind having been a part of so many marches? Well, what was going through my mind really was the sixty three march. I just left jail as so many of my classmates had. We we were we were facing jail and some had been beaten, others in the hospital. But we felt that we were winning. We could not be stopped. And those who are now determined to go forward. Women are determined to maintain their right to self-determination. Mm. Workers are determined to fight for pay equity. We'll mm. fight. We're f- determined to fight for our share of economic justice. You know, we're having the Royal Street Project January, well, February 15th through 17th here in New York at the Grand Hyatt. Right. And we're free now, but not equal. And, and so for the classic point, everybody has Super Bowl and Am I for the, uh, Atlanta? Am I for mm-hmm. Patriots? We have done one ad in 51 years. Mm. One ad in yeah. 51 years. And so it's about equality, free right. but not equal. 20,000 auto dealerships, fewer than 300 are African American. It's about equality. I share of pension funds, state pension funds, and county pension funds, and federal pension funds, uh, and, 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 and labor and church. And yet, those are the monies that let make way for hedge fund trillionaires who buy up whole towns. And so we want to fight for our share of capital. Right. Now, in your opinion, after, you know, I'm so glad you brought that up equality, uh, Trump's uh, immigration order threat to um, cut funding to s- sanctified cities. Uh, <laughs> isn't this like unusually violent? You okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just fine. <laughs> don't don't give a, make this no emergency. People choke every now and then. Go right on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, all right. I want them to say, you know, what you do to our reverend? All right. But I think it's unusually violent, don't you think? The the way the tone he's taking well, and the tone, you know, it, the good thing happened that the Mexican president decided not to come to visit Trump. Uh, it says that a, a, a man from a small country can have non-negotiable dignity. Some things are not for sale. Right. Your dignity is not for sale. Mm-hmm. I, I, you have the money, you have the guns, you have the. But I have my dignity. My dignity is not for sale. And here we have 15 million, Trump threatening to deport 15 million people. Children's crying, am I going to lose Reverend? Am I going to lose my mom and my dad? Who's, yeah. who's, who have to, have to go home? But now even they're bringing up the children who are b- born here. He said give them, what, three or four weeks before he decides whether they have to go oh, back as well. That's unconstitutional and, and it's immoral. But let, let's go a step further. I think that uh, what's happening is that cities are mobilizing because – Trump is threatening to cut off resources to whole cities. Oh yeah, because the, the, because because the whole workers sanctified. were in sanctuary. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Immigrants were in sanctuary. and let us not forget Jesus went to Egypt as a, as an immigrant. He was a refugee. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the the Herod threatened to uh, do genocide against the firstborn babies, and Mary and Joseph took him to Egypt as a refugee, mm-hmm. as an immigrant. And so we know something about immigrants and re- people fleeing for their lives. And people left that border. And, and, and why build a bridge between us and Mexico? 
We share 2,000 miles of border with Mexico. Two-thirds of this hemisphere, two-thirds is, 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 is Spanish-speaking. Mm -hmm. English is the minority language in our hemisphere. We need Mexico, uh, our neighbors. Right. What it, our neighbors. But in your opinion, what would you say is the percentage of possibility of that really happening? Well, in some sense, they're beginning to round up the process right now. Uh, it's, it's a real possibility. There's going to be some, some, some drawback, too. People are going to fight back. Uh, but the, the, the Congress has to be involved in this. Right. Trump is, is not king. But again, I repeat that while he has been uh, crowned as the king or the captain of the ship, the wind will determine which, which way the ship goes. Right. We are the wind of hope. We are that wind. We will not go. But, you know, I, in 1955, <coughs> Rose Parks in Montgomery, the governor and the mayor, everybody was against her, but she had the wind of hope behind her. Right. And the wind prevailed. And I'm in Birmingham. We, we didn't have any elected officials. We had the wind with us. And, and I think the wind of, of new possibilities, workers fighting for pay equity and women fighting for gender equality, we fight for racial justice, Black Lives Matter. We are not going back. Right. So what can we do now? Because we got the power of social media. Mm -hmm. We had the march. What do we do now, Reverend? First of all, <coughs> most fights must be fought at the local level when the, when the crowds are not there. For example, New York has, as a state, uh, you only have one day to vote. You should have multiple days to vote. Early voting, they call it. Mm -hmm. uh, second, the 18 year olds should be automatically registered to vote. Right. You're 18 year old American in the Federal Registrar. Why not registrar and register to vote? Right. You should have ballots with pictures on them so people can see who they're voting for. Right. The things we can begin to do right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and we fight for the Affordable Care Act right now. Now, some people are so absurd, so absurd, they want a, a Affordable care, but they don't want Obamacare. It's the same thing. Exactly the same Th thing that those are people who are uneducated about. They want age, but they don't, they yeah. don't want omelets. Right. <laughs> 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 Excellent. Man, the perfect platform to push forward is the Wall Street Project well, what Economic I want to do is to Summit. Meet us at the Grand Hyatt on mm -hmm. the 15th, 17th. And part of that is that we must not fortify ourselves to fight this fight. As we fought with our votes, we must also fight with our dollars. There's still 10, there's still 10 million blacks unregistered. Nobody right. has a right to expect much and, and give out a little. We still got too many people unregistered uh -huh. who don't fight back with the vote. But we, we may or may not vote with the ballot. We fight with the dollar every day. We must leverage that dollar to get our share of investment in the green line, the red lines that we live behind. And I see that you're going to address higher education, financial education, uh, leaders that fight for equality in the techno technolo um, technology space, but also you've got generational diversity and the hip hop millennials. I've, I'm surrounded every day by our millennials. I've asked them to give me two questions to ask you. Uh -oh. So, <laughs> so the first is um, they have a problem letting go of some of the degrading and debilitating things that Trump has said during his campaign and even now. How do they move forward with a positive outlook? Well, first of all, resent Trump saying degrading things about us. We also resent the sense degrading things about ourselves. Nobody has the right to degrade us. We're mm -hmm. people of dignity. We, we've suffered many battles and we've won many battles against great odds. No mm -hmm. one should, should, should find it e exportable of commercial value to the mean of denigrate black people. Right. Nobody should do that. Yeah. And so, but some people are insult proof. Right. Because for them, everything is negotiable if enough money is involved. And I think that's the message that's involved with the Mexican president. He's saying, we owe you money, we're a little country, you're a big country, but I'm not going to come down and be humiliated. My dignity is non negotiable. Mm -hmm. That's a high principle on which you're saying your dignity should be non negotiable. Right. So, mm -hmm. how the, the way that they move forward is to let it go and, and do some of the things that you're saying that we need to put well, into action, I'm these I'm calls to I mean, action. I mean, I, what I'm trying to say is that uh, an insult, don't be insult proof. Know when you're insulted, but know that strong minds break strong chains. Don't mm. self degrade, don't self destruct, mm. don't self destroy. Study diligently. Learn to think like you dribble a basketball. Learn to think coherently like you like you rap. Because in the in the in today's world, science, technology, engineering, art, and math, STEAM really mm -hmm. does matter. One of the one dimension of our work would be to bring in young people who will we were trying to get a thousand churches to begin to teach in their churches uh, apps and codes to our, to our youth. Oh. Teach financial literacy so they can begin to think about how do you 
in saving and invest, not just how you spend and glut. How do you invest and save? Mm-hmm. Every time I answer, black people spend a trillion dollars a year. That that's not brave. If you if you spend that much and broke, you should be ashamed, not proud. Right. If you got that much, you ought to be bragging about how much of it you saved and invested, not how much you spent. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can get further information at the Wall Street Project Economic Summit. Uh, it is the twentieth annual Rainbow Push. Uh, summit, you can call 646-569-5889 or go to rainbowpushwallstreetproject.org. Another question they had for you was, you know, they always see a very, very, very serious side of Dr. King. They wanted to know, you know, did you all joke on each other? Did you all um, play games? Did you play cards? Did you did you play, you know, did you, what did you do for fun? Well, we used to crack on each other. Really? <clears throat> I, uh, of course, I, I, was, I couldn't play, play whist with them because I lost my last whist game. I was six. Ah. Uh? I lost because I was six. That's all I <laughs> <laughs> No, Dr. King was a very well rounded person, very, very smart, but uh-huh. also could laugh a lot. Right. And could play a lot. Um, uh, very bright, but also a lot of courage. I like to remind uh, young people that Dr. King did finish high school at 15. Very he finished college smart. at 19. Yes. He got his uh, seminary degree at 22 and his PhD at 26. Mm-hmm. He, was, he was ready for the bear. And so while fun has its place, he was more serious than funny. But certainly could take a joke and could uh, and could laugh. Wow, just like you. Yes. Oh, boy. I've learned. 646 <laughs> <laughs> is uh, where you can call or you can go to Rainbow Push Wall Street Project dot org to find out more information about the Wall Street Project Economic and, and remember Summit. That deep water does not drown you. Say it again. Deep water does not drown you. No. You drown when you stop. Kicking. When you stop kicking. Don't stop. That's kicking. right. Don't stop kicking, y'all. Keep it's going to be at the Grand Hyatt, February fifteenth to the seventeenth. The Wall Street Project Economic Summit six four six five six nine fifty eight eighty nine. Don't stop kicking, Reverend Jackson. <laughs> 